Hi everyone, happy International Women's Month. I am excited to be sitting down today with two amazing members of the data science and AI industry. Please join me in welcoming Neha Shukla, a New York Times featured inventor, and she's only 18 years old, incredible. As well as Wenjing Zhang, Senior Director of Data and AI at LinkedIn. It is a real privilege to have you both here today, and I'm really looking forward to our discussion. Thank you so much, Zia. I'm so excited to be here with you and Wenjing on this really important discussion. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Okay, so before we kick off, how do you both feel about doing a fun rapid fire to get to know you both a bit better? So are you a morning or night person? Definitely morning person. I'm bouncing between morning person and night person. <laughs> Sounds like me. If you were a song, what would you be? Um, I would say Dream On by Aerosmith. Uh, stronger. Ah, uh, nice. What was your first job? <laughs> Being a COVID-19 specialist for the World Affairs Council of Harrisburg. So helping a local community organization. Uh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> My first job was an uh, analyst in a bank. Um, what is your all-time favorite book that you read? My all-time favorite book is The Positronic Man by Isaac Asimov. Xiaopin Wars, uh, words uh, as will and representation. Uh, it's not easy to read. It helped me shape my perspective of life when I was at Niha's age. And maybe last but not least, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Time travel. Teleportation, no more traffic. <laughs> <laughs> nice, you could use that in Toronto here. All right, so let's talk about something we all, three of us have in common which is our passion for data and AI. So maybe Neha, how about you? What excites you about data and AI? I'm excited about data and AI's incredible potential to transform our future. And when I see things like ChatGPT and stable diffusion, really disrupting things from research to the way that we look at images, it's really, really exciting for me. Your passion definitely resonates with me, Neha. Uh, data is so essential for generating knowledge and understanding uh, about the world around us. And the pattern, the trend, the cause and effect we learn from the data can help us make smarter decisions. And AI is just an exciting and rapidly growing field. It is transforming our world and the AI-driven transformation is just getting even faster and more disruptive nowadays. Thanks, Wen Jing. And I don't know about you both, but I feel like people are asking me more about my job than ever before. So uh, an exciting, an exciting time. Um, so Wenjing, let's talk about career journey. The highs, the lows, what challenges uh, uh, you went through. Uh, what started you in, in data science? I started my career in finance industry in the recession. And when eBay recruiter reached out to me via LinkedIn, I was like, oh yeah, I want to work in a role where I can have access to massive data and is able to change people's lives at scale. And I have had many transitions in the tech industry since uh, since then, and from eBay to LinkedIn, from an uh, individual contributor to manager, from leading a local team to global teams. And most recently, about a year ago, from leading a data science team to adding AI to my charter. Uh, while they are all very different transitions, they have one thing in common, that is none of the transitions were easy, but all of them were a lot of fun. Um, and, and there's a common pattern, I like to call it like the S-curve. Uh, I stuck at the job at the first, and then gradually dig myself out of it and climb back up. Uh, and that S-curve captured all the highs and lows in my career and makes the journey very challenging as well as rewarding. Awesome. Thanks, Wenjing. I love I love the S curve and uh, just the different directions your career has taken as well. Um, Neha, all right, at 18, <laughs> you've already had some pretty awesome achievements. Uh, so tell us a little bit about it. I would say that my passion for inventing truly began at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, I would always sit right here in my little makeshift bedroom lab, looking out the window and seeing how my neighbors outside were just unable to maintain a safe social distance. And I wanted to do something to help. I didn't know the first thing about programming, the first thing about technology, but within the first two weeks of the pandemic, I taught myself how to code and you know how to build microprocessor hardware. And I developed my first prototype of six feet apart, which is a wearable social distancing device <laughs> that essentially slows the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic using ultrasonic technology. It was crazy because that summer, my idea got like picked up by the New York Times and it was an incredible 
point where I saw that, you know, every small voice in inventing, every, you know, even the smallest ideas really do count in making a difference. And um, I've really loved developing apps and, and devices and different, uh, you know, hardware and software with technology and with AI and data science to really contribute towards creating solutions to global problems. Um, and recently, my biggest tie with AI is I serve as the World Economic Forum's Generation AI Youth Council Chair and U.S. Representative. So really working with you know, governments and corporations to make sure that ethical and child safe AI is really kept at the forefront and we're making sure that children's safety is, is being protected with these systems. Your passion for inventing such an early age uh, smallest ideas make a difference and believe in your ideas. So super inspirational. Um, so now I want to shift and focus on uh, our industry. Let's begin with uh, some myths uh, that, that surround it. First myth, data science has an image problem. It's not cool enough. Well, I, I could be biased, but data science is super cool <laughs> in my <laughs> mind. It is in our medicine, how we harvest food, how we address critical issues like climate change, and how cool is that? As part of the, the Gen Z generation, I can say that data science and AI is absolutely super cool. It might have an image problem, people might be afraid of it, but to anybody watching, do not be afraid of data science and AI. I love it, both of you. Um, all right, let's go to the second myth. Uh, data science is abstract, uh, really can't quantify the impact. Actually, it's almost quite the opposite, that data science and AI are such powerful tools that they have such an endless ability to actually create an impact. And when you have powerful tools that you're working with, like artificial intelligence and machine learning or data science, um, and I think those are tools that you can use on such a broad scale to tackle issues exactly like Wenjing mentioned. Well, it may involve some complex concepts, uh, an abstract model in the sausage making process, but the complexity and abstract nature is where the fun is. Yeah, I love, I love that Wenjing and, and, and I love how you said the fun in it. Um, and the other thing I want to say is around just uh, some of the AI, I think we're, we're also seeing um, just uh, the imagination of almost everyone with some of these new large language models, chat GPT, um, kind of enter the, the mainstream conversation. So now that we all know it's a cool job, um, it's also about making sure everyone has the ability to do it. Uh, so I know the numbers, you know, aren't where they should be and there's still a lack of um, diversity across the board. Yeah, I, I think it's critical to understand the current landscape of representation so we can better gauge uh, where we are and how we can make progress. If you can measure, you can you can you can change and improve. And according to the latest industry benchmark, the statistic run by Deloitte shows that the large tech companies are making slow but steady progress in increasing female workforce representation. If you can measure, you can change and improve. I love uh, just showing kind of the value of, of data just on this subject, so thanks. Um, Neha, um, I'll bring it to you. Where do you think uh, we can do better as organizations and in the industry? Um, one of the major strategies that we can do is have really high level leaders like both of you today, um, encouraging young female, especially through mentorships, and then also having things like sponsorships, funding and scholarships provided to make sure that young people, especially girls, are able to you know, fulfill those dreams and pursue this passion of entering careers in technology. I've been actually running global workshops for students, especially girls, for focusing on areas like STEM, but also looking at innovation and problem solving. Thanks, maybe just a, a follow up on that one. So, you know, me coming from a place of privilege as a male leader in a large you know, company, you know, how can leaders like me do a better job um, at making a more inclusive environment, both uh, for my team um, and others looking to join or be part of it? I would say that a major way to um, bring in more women as well as have a more inclusive team is just creating an, an environment where women are, you know, not afraid to be their authentic self and then having a place where, you know, the quietest voices in the room or the people who are most afraid of speaking up are encouraged and feel comfortable in doing so. I think that's a great way to provide inclusion um, in your team and in the workforce in general. Uh, some really great insights in supporting women uh, for mentorship, support, guidance, um, and of course, uh, the massive benefits that it brings. So we discussed the what and the uh, ideas around how. Wenjing, what are some ways the industry can do better? 
Yeah, it's not just about increasing the number of women in the industry, but also creating a supportive environment uh, where they can feel valued and they can thrive. Uh, and it includes promoting work-life balance, offering flexible working arrangements, as well as providing mentorship for all engineers, regardless of gender or other diversity factors. At LinkedIn, we have a REACH program, R-E-A-C-H. Uh, it's a technical apprenticeship program at LinkedIn that bridges the opportunity gap for individuals with non-traditional background. We've designed the program to give those who are who doesn't have an engineering background an opportunity to get their foot in the door in the tech industry and begin to continue their co technical career. Thanks, Benjamin. Loved hearing about the REACH program and all the different mentorship programs. Uh, Neha, yeah, you're just getting started, but represent uh, the pipeline of talent we aspire to have. How did you get started um, and how do you think organizations should take action? That is a really great question. And for me personally, coming from a small town and not having access to STEM or tech education at school, really looking outside my community and, and looking in places like the internet was really crucial in getting started. So t for me, it was you know taking online courses and certifications, reaching out to people using LinkedIn, of course, <laughs> um, to, to reach out to mentors and leaders in the tech industry, take advantage of the free courses and resources that companies provide for your career growth. Awesome. Thanks, Neha. All right. So thank you both for being here today. Uh, it's been, a, for me, a really inspirational conversation, a lot of learnings. Uh, but before we close, uh, given it's uh, Women's Month, I have to ask two final questions. Who is a female you admire and why? There are so many of them. Uh, if I were to pick one, uh, it would be Michelle Obama. Uh, she broke the barriers and paved the way for future generations of women and minority. Um, I admire her journey and determination, and she leads by authenticity, empathy, uh, and a strong sense of purpose. I would say that I'm really inspired by Mary Golda Ross. She's a very little known um, engineer, but she's the first ever female Native American engineer. Her, her journey of being the first of so many um, female engineers and representing a really underrepresented community deeply inspires me. And I really hope more people will look into her, her journey and, and her impact on the world. Awesome, I uh, definitely will. Um, <laughs> so you asked me personally, uh, a female I admire, um, and maybe both are aware of her, um, um, Malala Yousafzai. Um, so I myself um, have a, a Pakistani origin. Both my parents grew up in Pakistan um, and always admired her story on uh, childhood activism, um, activism for girls and education. Lastly, as kind of we're going to close, uh, uh, both of you, uh, any advice to those who are looking to start or advance their careers in tech? And maybe Neha, I'll start with you and then we'll go to Wenjing to close. Absolutely. I think my advice would be never give up. I think for me, as somebody who started my journey with tech at 15 years old and had no idea what she was doing to get started, I would say there are so many times where you hit a roadblock, you have a failure, some, you're doing something, it doesn't work, your whole screen is filled with red errors from your code. And those are moments where, you know, sometimes the easiest thing to do is give up. And I would say for all the young people out there watching, please do not give up. You never know when your greatest discovery or your next big career milestone is right around the corners. It's very important that you understand your skills, your experience, and the value that you bring to the table. Please do believe in yourself and advocate for yourself. You can seek out allies and mentors who support you and advocate for you. By the way, don't forget, LinkedIn is a powerful platform to leverage for networking. Lastly, I do want to encourage my fellow leaders to take an active role in supporting and empowering member in tech, women in tech. Whether it's coaching, creating inclusive environment, providing flexible work arrangement, recognizing rewarding contribution, or responding to the related incoming request on LinkedIn. By demonstrating our commitment to this course, we can inspire others to follow suit and create a more supportive and inclusive environment for women in tech. A few, few notes I made. Never give up. Find a support system. Believe in your potential. Advocate for yourself. Seek out mentorship. Um, some great advice, Wenjing and Neha. Thank you both. Uh, it was an awesome discussion today. I uh, really appreciate you both joining uh, and, and facilitating this discussion with me. And I want to wish you both a happy Women's Month. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.